With Darwin Milan making a magnificent 100, Middlesex passed 200 in a NatWest T20 blast innings for the second night in succession as they beat Sussex by 42 runs at the Brighton and Hove Jobs.com county ground. Kyle Abbott matching Milan each with the best T20 performances of their careers. Batting first after winning the toss, the visitors could not have made a much better start. The opening pair going on to record the second largest opening wicket partnership in domestic T20 cricket. This was awesome stuff from Milan and Paul Sterling, the Irishman coming into this game after getting to 90 against Kent on the previous evening. A career best in this format. He and his partner were soon looking good. We had to wait until the fifth over for the first six of the night, that going to Sterling, who is in outstanding clean-hitting form right now. Middlesex had 60 runs on the board after the six overs of power play, but the lifting of the fielding restrictions did nothing to help the Sharks, Sterling immediately going after Michael Yardy. Thus far, Sussex have relied on Yardy and Will Beer to squeeze the life out of the batting team in the middle overs. Not this time, Milan tucking into the leg spinner here. The visitors had the 100 up in the 10th over. Sterling had rushed to another 50 off 28 balls and was in no mood to calm down. Milan was slower at the start, but boy did he make up for that. He had only 34 runs to his name at the halfway stage, yet he was to have a ton of 58 balls later on. This punishing partnership was to go on to realise 187 runs. And it was at last ended by Ollie Robinson, Sterling missing the ball for once to be bowled for 88. That's 178 T20 runs in 24 hours for the powerful Irish international. Owen Morgan came and went to the next ball, Chris Jordan with the catch at long off as Robinson tried to claw his side back into this game. All eyes were now on Milan, who as a 20-year-old seven summers back made the headlines with 100 in a T20 quarter final against Lancashire. He was at three figures again off 58 balls with 13 fours and two sixes. And he added a third six to end on a breathtaking 115 made out of his sides 221 for two. That was Middlesex's best ever total in this format and the joint 24th best of all time. This, the day after they'd made their highest ever score at Lords. So how to chase that down? By hitting the ninth ball of the reply into the distance. Wickets could not afford to be lost early though, so Sussex were up against it. When Chris Nash was bowled by Abbott in the third over for three, it was the start of quite a night for the bowler. It was set up nicely for Mahela Jaya Wardener, but he was out in the next over. Morgan with the cats off a cover drive off James Harris. And the Sharks were left with a lot to do by reaching only 50 for three from the power play. Craig Kachopa clipping Harris out to Nathan Souter at long on after making 16. The game was following a similar pattern to the one at Lords the night before. A huge total leading to a cluster of wickets by the chasing team. Luke Wright tried to buck the trend as he attacked Souter. James Franklin bagged a fiver in that win over Kent and he reduced the hosts here to 73 for four after nine overs as Harry Finch gave Morgan his second catch of the night, judging a real skyer well before tumbling to the ground. The Sharks were left to find 141 runs from the last 10 overs, almost impossible, although Wright hadn't given up, this third six taking him to a 50 of 31 balls. He was now the key man of this match. If he could keep going for a while, then Sussex could yet still win from here. And the way he went after Franklin, it was clear that he hadn't given up, even though the run rate required had moved beyond 15 per over. These were both massive hits. With Chris Jordan back after being released by England again and looking to prove a point as much as anything else, that rate was maintained, the target down to 79 off the last five overs. Wright was playing a brilliant hand and he moved into the 90s, taking the runs required down to 65 off 24 balls. A couple of big overs now and this was still anyone's game. But then Abbott returned to the attack to alter everything. With his first ball, the South African watched Wright hit the ball high into the night sky to be on his way for an exceptional 47 ball 91, an innings which would have won many a game. Then next ball, Jordan was also out for 35. The partnership between the two, which had been worth 84 runs in 44 balls, now quickly forgotten as Morgan claimed catch number three. Albert rather remarkably delivered a double wicket maiden. So the rate required was now into the 20s. More wickets then were bound to come, and they did. Morgan was involved yet again as Harris ended the 18th over with a wicket of beer, who clubbed to long off. Then next ball, Abbott bowled Stefan Pilot for a golden duck before he ended with the fantastic figures of 5 for 14 from his four overs, 
Naturally, a T20 best for the 27-year-old. T Mal Mills held by Toby Rowland Jones off a much slower ball as Sussex fell well short. Yardy, batting at number 11, struck the 14th maximum of the night in the last over, but in the end, a total of 221 was just too many for the home team. They finished on 179 for 9, and that meant a defeat by 42 runs. Middlesex with two thumping wins in a row. They now head to Hampshire for a game next Thursday, while the Sharks will hope to put this second defeat from four behind them when they return to T20 action in a fortnight's time at home to Essex.